Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Out YouTube channel and normally I would be here to do a sheet load leftovers video but because this month's sheet load didn't really have any leftovers I thought I would do a sheet load throwback. I hope you'll stick around, see how I kind of update the August 2019 sheet load of cards and see the final set I make. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Recently, I sent a friend a mask through the mail and I sent one of the cards I had made with it. Well, she saw it and she asked me to make her some more. So today's video, not only is it a rework of last August's sheet load of cards, it's also a custom order. When I first started sheet load of cards, I made it so all the cards would look the same. Recently, I've started to switch it up where you can mix and match the pieces so your cards look different. Last August was one of the cases where they all looked the same. So what I'm going to try to do today is cut the papers a little differently so I can do some mixing and matching. So instead of having piece one always be the polka dotted paper, sometimes it will be the leafy paper. If you're a subscriber to my channel, or you're getting ready to be, and you want to download the free printable from August 2019, I will let you know at the end of this video how you can do that. You can also go check out the original video from last year. I will link that video below as well. Before I get started on the process, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the supplies I'll be using today. For my sentiments, I will be using these two Hero Arts stamp and cut set. My friend did go ahead and pick out what die cuts and what sentiments she wants on her cards. For my cardstock, I'll be using some gray cardstock and I will be replacing some of the cardstock with 28 pound vellum. For the card bases, I have already cut and folded those off camera, but I did just cut and fold 12 of those. For my pattern papers, I will be using these five patterns and they are all from the die cuts with the view cotton field stack. I recently bought this at Joanne and fell in love with all of the patterns in this. If you are by a Joann's, I would suggest checking this out. When I cut these later, I'm probably going to use the peach for the die cut sentiment and then I will be mixing and matching these two patterns and these two patterns together for the final cards. If I add any products once I start my process, I will be sure to let you know. I will also be going to a voiceover, so if I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. I'm gonna start today by doing the cutting and instead of cutting each piece into six pieces that are the same size, I'm gonna distribute the sizes across different pattern papers. I will be cutting three pieces that are five and a quarter inch wide by four inches tall and three pieces that are two and a quarter inch wide by three and a half inches tall. I did have to cut off the hole on the top of my paper first before I could cut it down into the five and a quarter and two and a quarter inch strips. Once I had those two strips, I then just cut them down to the final height. Now don't forget you don't have to pay a lot of attention to the dimensions because you can download the printable for free as a subscriber. Eventually I will be cutting a reverse fishtail into the smaller pieces but for now I'm just going to set those to the side and continue to cut all the pattern papers just like I did that first one. For now, I did not cut the peach polka dot paper because I will be using that for die cutting later. Now off camera, I did end up cutting it into three and a half inch strips to prepare it to go through my die cutter. 
Next, I'm going to cut two pieces of 28 pound vellum per the instruction for CS1B. Now, because I am making two sets of cards, I do have to cut two pieces of this, and I will end up with 12 pieces that are two and a half inches wide by three and three quarters inches tall. Eventually, just like the small strips that I showed you from the pattern paper, these will have a reverse fishtail put in the end. But again, I'm gonna wait to do that until I have some more cutting done. Next, I got out three pieces of gray cardstock, and I will be cutting this per the instructions for CS1A. On the original sheet load of cards, you end up with two extra pieces, so that's why you do not have to double this from two to four sheets when you're going to make 12 cards. And here is a look at all of the cut pieces. Now it's time to cut that reverse fishtail. What I'm gonna do is make a white cardstock template that I measure and cut that angle at the bottom so that I can put it on the pattern papers and cut against that. I cut a piece of white cardstock that was two and a quarter by three and a half inches and then I pulled out my T ruler. And the first thing I do is find the bottom center of this piece. So that would be at one and one eighth inches. Once I have marked the center, I then turn it 90 degrees and I mark a half an inch up on each side. Once I have those marks made, I bring in my Fiskars photo trimmer and you will see there that I removed the guard. I do not suggest this, it is not safe, but I made sure to be very careful. I lined up but two of the points and made a little slice. Then the piece that I cut off, I moved it to the other side just to make sure that those points were correct so my angle would be even. I did assure they were and once I did that, I lined up those same points again and sliced it. And now I have a cardstock template and I actually ended up paper clipping this to my printable so I'll have it for future use. Once that template was made, it was time to start cutting those smaller pieces. I got out a larger pair of scissors so that when I cut, my blade would cut across the whole thing in one fell swoop. What I did was line the top part of the scissor up against that cardstock piece and then I just cut. Now I did end up cutting two pieces at a time. If you're gonna do this, make sure that you hold those very tight so they do not shift while you're cutting. I just did this until I had all 12 of those pieces cut. Once they were cut, I got out my ATG and I added these to the vellum bases. Now I purposely made the vellum longer so that I could get an even border at the bottom. So you'll see here I place this top center on the piece of vellum and then I get back out those same scissors, line up the blade where I think it's going to cut evenly all the way across that cut and make my slice. Again, I continued the same thing until I had all of them cut. Once everything was cut, I could start assembling the cards. The first thing I did was add adhesive to the back of the larger pattern paper piece and then centered this onto the gray cardstock base. Now I am gonna go ahead and place one of the banners onto the card front, but at this point I wasn't sure if I would have to put some of these to the left of the card, so I saved that for later and did the rest off camera, but you'll see here that I matched the two pattern papers together that I had purposely meant earlier to pair up. I did the same thing until I had all 12 card bases adhered together. Next, I die cut all of my words from the peach polka dotted paper. I placed the two dies face up and then my pattern paper went face down on top of it. I did have to get out my scissors to help me poke out the hello, but once I had those done, I just continued this same process until I had six of each word cut out. Mm -hmm. 
I had completely forgotten earlier to cut my white cardstock for my sentiment strips. So I got out a piece of white cardstock and I cut a piece that was four and a half inches wide. I then proceeded to cut this into half inch strips until I think I had about 12 done. Now some of these I knew would be for smaller sentiments, so I went ahead and cut those down to three inches wide. And that is the actual size called for on the sheet load of cards. Now I could stamp the sentiments. Because some of the sentiments would have the words before love, I am going to show you how I stamped one of each. On the longer one, I will be stamping sending you, then with the love die cut. And on the smaller one, I will be stamping the you more, so it says love you more. I will be stamping the love you more one first, so I took the skinnier strip and I placed that centered across that reversed fishtail banner. I will be doing my stamping today in basic gray from Stampin' Up, and I will be adhering all of my die cut words using my art glitter glue. Now you just saw me there take my stopper out of my art glitter glue bottle. I will link the video below of the YouTube creator who I bought this from. That thing has saved me from losing my stopper so many times. After I spread the adhesive on the back of the love word, I place that above my sentiment strip, and then I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the you more on there. I was super careful since this was gonna be hard to take up, and I think it worked out okay. Now to make sure that that's going to adhere nicely, I did place each of these off to the side underneath a stamp block to dry. This next one, I pulled out the longer strip because I will be putting the words before the word love. That white strip going across there helps the love word stand out a little bit from the background on this banner. Once again, I add adhesive to the back of my die cut and then I get out my stamp and ink it up to finish that sentiment. Once all of those were dry, I went ahead and put all of the card fronts onto card bases. And you'll see that for this hello here on the left, for some of the cards I actually used one of the blue pattern papers for my die cut. I just thought that stood out better from the background. Before I can call these cards complete, I do want to add a little bit of sparkle. To keep my friend from having to pay for extra postage for cards that are bumpy, I did try to keep these cards pretty flat. So for my embellishments today, I am using these clear glitter dots from Elizabeth Craft Designs. They add such a nice bit of sparkle, but they're still flat and make an easy to mail card. While I finish placing the gems, I will let you know how you can download this printable for free if you're a subscriber to my channel. Like always, we just go on the honor system here, so please make sure if you're going to download or print this that you are subscribed to my channel. All the way at the bottom of my description box below is a link to the August 2019 PDF. You can also get to it from that original video which I have linked in the description box below. Now that all of the sparkle is in place, here is a close-up look at all of the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made today's cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.